Gerhard Richter was a 1957 uh, student at the Dresden Academy of Fine Arts. As a talented student, he was allowed to continue his work at the Academy and to have his own studio there. You must imagine that he was working in a socialist, realist style. He was doing wall paintings and canvas paintings, but he was not really a graphic artist. There was a course offered in printmaking and Richter mostly unwillingly participated in this course. Richter used the, the materials of the technique against, against uh, its, uh, its own course. So instead of inking the plates with a rubber roller, he used the rubber roller itself as an instrument and produced these, uh, these sheets. There are 31 uh, images which he produced at the time. He gave them to a friend, as this friend liked them. They were not lost, but they were not known to the world outside Dresden. After the unification of Germany in 89, Gerhard Richter met his friend and this friend showed these sheets to him and he was in a way moved and he thought, well, these were maybe the only works from this period in his life which he could recognize, maybe not as mature work, but as a valid work. He went back, he signed them, the ones which were not signed, and he reorganized them as a sequence. And so Elbe now became a first work of Gerhard Richter, a first recognized work among all these other works of this period, which he rejected because he uh, willingly started his official work in 1962. Look at a few works in particular. There are, in a way, classical landscapes where a moon is reflected in, uh, in a water, in, a, in, a, in the river Elbe, probably. In the beginning, he was not really satisfied, or he was maybe afraid of what he did, because this was completely out of context in this German democratic art landscape. And so he drew little figures within these, let's say, landscapes which he produced, little figures which he drew from similar cartoon-like stories which he had been drawing at that time. And these little figures, in a way, justified what he was doing because he noticed that by the smudging the paper, he was creating a kind of imaginary landscape, and this landscape had to be populated. But this kind of clear, realistic landscape soon changes into an abstract space, where the inking of these sheets goes over the whole surface of the sheets, and there are sheets where the inking is almost complete, which are almost black, where only a few edges are open, and where the space becomes infinite, becomes really ungraspable, which goes much beyond the, the small dimensions of the actual sheets. There are also sheets where there are certain accidents which happen. And these accidents become elements of a happening of an imaginary scene. But there's not this kind of surrealist attitude which, in, for instance, Max Ernst represents for German uh, art. It is a kind of submarine scenery which happens by itself and which only afterwards in the reading uh, of the work by the spectator, by the artist himself, becomes whatever it might be. But the fact is important that all this is in a way representing something. It's never abstract, abstract in a classical modernist sense, but Gerhard Richter's work is deeply figurative and always he's longing for a kind of a figure, for a kind of a representation of a scene to appear in this seemingly first abstract work. If I say that Gerhard Richter is always a figurative artist, there are, let's say, two meanings to that. There's a representation of something existing in the outside world. The outside world as the world as the reality, to which you can refer by creating your associations when looking at the work. And on the other hand, there's also a representation of abstract art. Because you have to imagine Gerhard Richter as a young man in the German Democratic Republic without access or without a large access to Western abstract art. So abstract art was an idea re represented by a few images in magazines which he had seen. And in this work also he represents his idea of what abstraction can be. 
So these two uh, movements interfere. Once the rep representation of an imaginary reality, on the other hand, the representation of modernist abstract art. And these come together and create a very unique situation. The rediscovery of the Elbe works came about, of course, after the fall of the German Wall. It was a very special period in German history and Gerhard Richter, as a citizen of Dresden, was very moved by that. It's not by chance that this is also a period when Gerhard Richter was doing his dark, icy paintings, the paintings dedicated to the winter months, on the one hand, and he was doing also a lot of works on paper, and 1991 he was doing a series of black ink drawings, figurative and abstract ones, which in a way to me seem to be related to these, these Elbe works. I don't know how close the origin of these late works can be put to the Elbe work, but still it doesn't seem a mere coincidence that he was exactly doing this at that time. But the interesting thing is that these works lived untitled for 50 years. He thought about a title to give to them. And uh, there were different ideas. In the end he settled down with Elbe, referring to the Elbe River which was there where these sheets were done, in front of the Brühl Terrace, where the Art Academy of Dresden is. So the Elbe River, which is of course a symbol of the Saxon landscape, is now given title to these works, and so they become again part of all what was happening at the time of the German tradition, and so they become more classical than they were thought at the time.